Okay. So I'm going to leave my, if you don't mind, I'm going to leave my one from the other day on the right here. And I'm also going to have, well, I'll put underneath it. And I'll put that there. And then this is the one we're copying. Okay. Now I did say start with the sky or if you've got your, if you haven't got your sky color mix up, mix up a sky color. I have made mine slightly bluer and brighter than it is in the photocopy. And I don't think there's anything wrong with changing things a bit as long as you keep the, the feel of it. The blue I've used, Shelley, for the sky is actually a mixture of ultramarine and Prussian blue. And I just made up a, a quite a pale mix of it. So if I'm doing my sky and I've got my tree shapes drawn up, I'm going to just zoom in a wee bit so you can see. Okay. I've got something on the back of here. So to pretend this is tree shapes. Um, I think when I'm doing the sky, I would first of all, wet the paper and I've got some blue still on my brush and I don't think that really matters. I'm going to deliberately leave bits of white paper so it's not all a solid mass of water or colour and I'm going to take that sky colour right down to where the base of the trees are more or less or the base of the foliage on my on my real thing. This is not the real thing, obviously. All right, so that would be the first thing I would do. I think you can see in his painting, there is an indication of some clouds there. Very faint, very pale. I can hardly see them, but I'm going to imagine there are a few puffy clouds there. So I'm now going to go to my blue, which I've mixed up. And I'm just going to literally drop it in in places. And it's, I've got my paper at a slight angle at 35, 30 degrees, that sort of angle. And I'm literally just dropping the color into the wetness. Uh, I'm not doing it very carefully because I deliberately want to leave some bits. Then I'll wash my brush out, dry it, and then just soften a bit, you know, around where the white bits are. That's it, okay? So I'm just soften the edges of the shape where, where it hits the white. Okay, and that's about okay. all I do. Now this pool at the bottom, I don't need that. So I'm going to go with my brush, which has got no color in it and just pick it up. Okay, so you can see it's uneven and that's how it should be. And I'm going to dry it so you can see how it will disappear. Okay, so when I lay this down on top of the one I have before, underneath it, you can see they're very close. Okay. I'm going to move my board along a bit so you can see it a bit better. Any questions or is everybody all right? Okay. Where did you drop in the extra blue? What did I watch? You dropped in some slightly darker blue, but I can't see it anymore because it's dried. It's dried. Really? Yeah, I mean, the color I mixed was this one here, which is Prussian blue and ultramarine. It's a quite a weak mixture. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, if you look at his painting, 
you know, his sky is not a strong color at all, is it? I don't know what your printout is like, but this is really very pale. I think that if anything, mine is bluer and slightly stronger than his. Yes. But, you know, if you want to make yours grayer, that's fine. You put a tiny weeny bit of red in it, it will make it grayer. Okay. Uh, alizarin, I mean, not, not vermilion. Okay. Okay, so really where I've got to, which should be the same place as you on the painting, I've just put that blue in there, okay? Yeah. Okay, yeah. now just to point out this on the, on the image, just above the head of the man on the barge, look at what the color looks like here. It's almost, as, well, it's sort of gray brown and, and a darker blue. So if you want to do that, you've got to dampen, dampen that area a little bit because it probably will be almost dry by now. And then just drop in um, a sort of, you can put burnt sienna into your blue sky color uh, and it will probably give you that sort of a color. Um, again, it's pretty weak, but the, you know, the two will kind of fuse together. If your color underneath is slightly damp, it will fuse. So if I was to do it on this one here, my, my practice one, mine is actually not quite completely dry. So um, if I put, like I said, a bit of burnt sienna, which is the reddy brown, into my blue, it makes it a lovely gray. Okay, and then I could just drop some of that over the top here. So it looks like that one there. And actually, because the bit underneath is still damp, it's blending in with it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I can soften the edge with water as well. Uh, for the bit on the left, which is browner still, I would probably add more burnt sienna to that color and possibly even a bit of raw sienna, which is the yellowy color. So it's more of a, a brown, a true brown here. And again, I would drop that in just over the top of the blue. And providing the blue underneath is not completely dry, it will fuse in quite nicely. Can you see that? Yeah. That's probably a little bit too yellow. I'd probably put less yellow and a bit more burnt sienna in it because this has got more, more red in it, this color here. But by the time it dries, it's not going to make a huge amount of difference because both of those colors will be quite light. So that's how I think he tackled this bit here. Um, it just, I don't know what was going on there. It may be that there was some foliage further back in the picture that, or some undergrowth that he's indicating with this sort of soft browny bluey color and he doesn't want to define it any more than that because as we discussed last week this is probably a sketch so he would have done it quite quickly and then you can put some more brown on the other side if you want to on this side here And just note how lovely the colors are when they're slightly damp and they work together. It's actually the, the you know, judging uh, that point where the color is not quite dry uh, when, when you want to fuse color together. That's, if you can do that well or, or learn to do it well, it, it really can make a painting look magical. Okay, so I'm gonna move off that practice piece. So that's where I've got to now with this. And I'm now going to start uh, concentrating on this right hand side over here. And those of you that have done that, that can finish the sky mix up a color for the lightest color of the foliage, which is, I think, a raw sienna type color. Mm. 
and I'll show you what, is, what colour it is on my piece of paper. What I've done so far is mix the, a sienna colour, which is for the majority of the foliage that all goes across the top of these this group of trees. And there also appears to be some down here in the bottom right hand corner. And there's a feeling of some of that colour creeping into what would be the water. Sorry, down the bottom of the page. Okay, can you see it there? Yep. Yes. Yep. Okay, I made this my water in this one a bit darker, but we, we'll forget about my water here. We'll forget about this one. We'll just look at this one. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to go straight into the, uh, I've drawn a little outline to help to guide me with where these shapes of the trees are. Um, and I'm just going to now drop in the raw sienna colour for the foliage. Just remember, you do not want to fill every last bit of it in, because looking at this picture, there's lots of bits of sky showing up through the, through the foliage, as there would be in the tree. And as there are in any trees, if you look outside now, I can see bits of sky uh, peeking through the foliage. Okay, so off we go. And remember to use your brush where, where it is on the edge of the um, foliage, you know, on the outer branches. So you can actually use your brush on its tip just to suggest those leaf shapes that are obviously there. So I'm using my brush. I'm not just filling in blindly. I'm actually thinking about it as I do it. You know, I'm thinking, well, that's going to have, you know, the outer leaves and you'll get a little suggestion of the form uh, showing, you know, of the actual leaf shape. Not very clearly because they're a long way off. But you will see something. It won't just be a round filled in line. So just, you know, use your brush on its tip when you're doing that outer edge and be conscious of the marks you're making. And then as you come in towards where the main foliage is, you can use more of the middle of the brush so it flattens out a bit. Um, and then you can, you can pull some of that wet colour down as you do it. And then go on to the next tree. Again, remember at the top of the tree, you're on the edge, you're beginning to see little fine shapes, which are the leaves. This is where you're creating texture uh, more than anything else with the brush. And do, you know, just leave lots of little white bits showing through and then it'll work fine. Work your way down the, down the image, down the, the form of the tree. As you get to this lower part, it becomes the, the foliage becomes denser. Uh, there will be other other colours going over the top of it, so you don't need to leave so much sky showing through in this part. There's a bit, but not much. 